In this video, we're going to take a look at how to construct a cladogram. And the first thing that we're going to do for this is kind of a separate activity. Um, and that is, I'd like you to take a, a minute, pause the video, and then on a piece of paper, draw a diagram of what you think your family tree would look like, showing at least you, your parents, and your grandparents. Give you some time to do this. Go ahead and pause the video. And then when you're ready, go ahead and push play and continue. So I'm going to assume, um, hopefully, that what you composed was not something like this, where in our example, we've got our great-grandfather, grandfather, father, and you. Um, this is not probably what your family tree would look like. And depending on your background, you might have done something that looked similar to this here, where we've got great-grandparents, grandparents, parents, siblings, and you branching off of that second cousins and cousins, maybe your family tree looked a little bit more like a pedigree, kind of depending on your background. Um, and when we're talking about evolution, it's kind of the same thing. It's not a linear progression, for example, of from a fish to a salamander to a cat to you. Um, if you look at any sort of arrangement of how species uh, are related, it's not a linear straight line like we see in this example. But it's more of something like this, where we have common ancestors and branching off of those common ancestors are modern species. And if we look at these, these diagrams here, these are called cladograms. And a cladogram is a diagram used in a process called cladistics, which shows relations uh, among organisms. Uh, a cladogram is not specifically an evolutionary tree because it does not show how ancestors are related to descendants or how much they have changed specifically. But it does show um, it does show uh, we can look at similar features uh, between different organisms. Um, and so some different parts of a cladogram that we want to identify. A node represents a specific taxonic unit, unit existing of um, a species and or an ancestor. So here would be a node right here. And these are the two taxonic units, um, species that are included in that node. A clade is a group of two or more taxa, or if we're looking at DNA sequences, DNA sequences, um, that includes a common ancestor and all of their descendants. So this portion right here is a clade because it includes both the uh, ancestor right here, as well as um, the two, uh, two in this case, two or more. We also have branch length, which represents the number of changes that uh, could have occurred. Um, here's our branch and the branch length can represent the number of changes that have occurred between that ancestral and the uh, present species. And lastly, we have a root, a root, a uh, common anse uh, ancestor of all of the taxa in that clado uh, cladogram. Um, additionally, with cladograms, we can have scaled um, and unscaled um, and uh, the primary difference between those being that the, uh, in a scale, the length of a branch indicates how much evolutionary change has occurred since it's split from a sister clade um, with at least one node. Um, the rooted uh, cladograms show evolu evolutionary relationships, whereas the unrooted just show the relationships between the different species. So let's look at a couple simple cladograms here to, to kind of outline some of these uh, nodes, in this case, represented here and here. Uh, terminal nodes representing ends of the line, so A, B, and C are representing terminal nodes. Sister clades, in which they share a common ancestor, would be A and B, because their common ancestor is here. And then the root uh, species or organism being right here for our cladogram. Here's a nice, pretty simple, well laid out cladogram. And it's got uh, a number of different characteristics that we're looking at. So these are the characteristics that we're looking at. And this cladogram is separating those species, uh, these species here, based off of how these characteristics um, are present in these different organisms. Um, and so, for example, if we were to ask which organisms have vertebrates or vertebrate organisms, it would actually include all of these because that is a characteristic right here that's present um, for all of these different organisms. And so in these next, next couple steps, we're going to learn how to actually construct a cladogram. The, so the first step is to compile characteristics that are being analyzed into a table. And I've done this here for you. Um, oftentimes, you'll be given this information. Sometimes, you'll have to look up this information. Um, but in this situation, we've got uh, four different species, shark, frog, kangaroo, and human. And we're looking at four different characteristics, uh, vertebrae, two pairs of limbs, mammary glands, and placenta. The second 
portion or, or task to do is to construct a Venn diagram using the tabled data. And when I say uh, Venn diagram, we're not going to do the traditional three uh, circles on top of each other, but we're actually going to stack circles on top of one another. And we're going to start with the characteristic that's shared by all of the, the taxa in the group and then kind of work inwards. Um, so, for example, looking at our table, the one characteristic, we'll go back here for a second, the one characteristic that all of these four different species have in common is that they have a vertebrae. And so we're going to start with that in our Venn diagram. We've got vertebrae, I list that here, and then I write shark because that's the organism that has that. Um, if, I move, if we move farther in, uh, we're getting more specific, and so then now the frog has two pairs of limbs, and any, any other species that are inside of this circle are also going to have two pairs of limbs. Our next one is a kangaroo. I know that's a little bit small, but that's what it says there is a kangaroo, and it has mammary glands, and so it also has two pairs of limbs, and also has a vertebrae. Lastly, we have placenta. And humans have a placenta, but they also, because of this Venn diagram, it indicates that they have mammary glands, two pairs of limbs, and vertebrae. And so then to put this into a cladogram, um, we start by drawing a solid single straight line and then branches off of that for these different species, um, starting with the uh, organism that has the least amount of marks or uh, characteristics in our table. And so then we actually want to add in these characteristics. So the first one that I would add in would be vertebrae. And I'd put that outside of the line for the shark because the shark has the vertebrae. So this suggests that all of these organisms have vertebrae. Next, I put four limbs here because all three of these organisms have four limbs. Third, mammary glands, both of these organisms have those. And then last, pl uh, placenta. To get a little bit of practice at looking at um, the, this cladogram that we looked at pr previously, a couple of questions here uh, for you to review. The first being, which node, one, two, three, or four, is the most recent? Hopefully, you were able to identify node number one as being most recent. Um, which node represents the most common ancestor for ray-finned fish and crocodiles? For that one, it would actually be number three, um, because that is where um, both ray-finned fish and crocodiles, the lines of them, meet. Number three, what characteristic do all organisms share in common? That happens to be vertebrae because that characteristic is on the outside so uh, of all these other lines. So that means that all of these organisms have vertebrae. And then lastly, which node is the common ancestor for all of the present organisms? And hopefully you were able to identify that as node number four. So that's an introduction into creating cladograms and a little bit of information about them. Um, be familiar with the, uh, the procedure for actually creating a cladogram as it will be on the assessment.